Tonight, a routine restaurant inspection pulls out surprises in Dunedin. That's not good. What not good? It's raining maggots in Auckland. They were just falling in the hair. It was all over the blue table. It's not nice. It's horrible. It really is. And in Canterbury, where there's smoke, there's fire. Get off my property. Get off my property. Get off my property. Get off my property. OK. In Dunedin, Environmental Health Officer Wayne Boss is heading out from the council for a routine inspection. Food poisoning is a serious public health risk, with over 12,000 people contracting various foodborne illnesses every year. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. Can you help? From. Oh. Um, Dunedin City Council Environmental Health okay, yeah. and I'm here to just do a routine inspection, food inspection of your premises. Chinese restaurant Blue Sky has a history of problems with food safety practices, currently carrying an adequate C grade. Any areas outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside the cool out here, okay. It should be this. It doesn't take long for Wayne to uncover problems. That's raw meat, it's in a bowl, but it's, it's uncovered as well, so it doesn't do all that you could reasonably, practically do to protect the food from risk of contamination. The food here is dangerously exposed to all sorts of cross-contamination. We've got cooked ducks there, but we've got no idea when they were actually cooked. When did you cook these ducks? Yesterday. Today? Yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. OK. What's, what's that? Sweet and sour pork. Sweet and sour pork. Oh, yeah. When would you made, have made that? I ordered it yesterday, got cooked it, yeah. Yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Without any labels as evidence, Wayne can't be certain. What about this pork? Yeah. Yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. What is it? Put the sour in. Right. And in the freezer, things are just as bad. That one's chicken's feet. Um, there's some which seem to be almost like raw pork. What's going on? Can you come and help me? Can, we, can you just tell me what some of these are? They're tiny stem some, the stem 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 pork. How old are they? The oldest. Mid the nail, they're going to keep it here. Oh, 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 I put this. What's this? Chicken feet, dim sum. When did you make them? Yeah, mid the nail. All oh, the, all the, mid the sold the day, all the sold the day. Already there are grave concerns about the operator's food safety practices. It's not clean enough. A lot of the food has, has become uncovered. This chicken looks like that because it hasn't been covered properly so it's going dry. And these meals, the dim sum, again, some of those haven't been covered, right? I've no idea how old they are. And again, you need to be getting in here, organising those and clearing out the old ones until you've got a system that you can tell me how fresh they are. OK, do you understand that? Yeah, all of the fish, they've done some any, any time, bit, any time. Yeah, bit, but that's yeah. not good. Not good? No, it's not good. Yeah. What, not good? Yeah. And the Wayne's concerns don't seem to be sinking in. That's a worry, because this inspection's going to get a whole lot worse. Yeah, they take the dim sum, all the fish, man, dim sum, the, 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 the suit, same. Okay. Yeah, no fish, man, I bring her, the cross, please okay. stop. Meanwhile, on Auckland's North Shore, Environmental Health Officer Brett Taylor is responding to a distress call from some unhappy tenants. One in four New Zealanders say the home they live in has contributed to poor health. How are you doing? I'm Brett from Northland City Council. Hi. Thanks for coming. 
tenants Chris and Leslie claim they have lived in filth for 18 months, unable to escape their lease. We just rang you out of desperation. Neither of us sleep at night. It's difficult when you've got a rat behind your headboard. Yeah. Um, it's even more difficult when you go to the laundry and there's a rat sitting on the washing machine mm -hmm. and it goes one way and you go the other way in a panic. We've got mice droppings like through these cupboards. I've let there's one in there and there's some at the back. Okay, and it's like that through the whole cupboard. Yeah. Oh, but as you can see, we've emptied all our cooking gear and yeah. Tupperware. Well, we've thrown all the Tupperware out, actually. Living with rats poses a serious health risk. We thought it was possums. We now know better. You'll invite people around for dinner and you're sitting down at dinner and five or six rats do the Kentucky Derby over your head and... Oddly enough, people sort of want to hurry up and leave. <laughs> so, it's not a great house for entertaining. Uh... It may be a dirty job, but Brett must unearth the full extent of this problem. OK, so that will just push up when I yep. go and up You'll there. probably get rat droppings on your head. Will I? Oh, lovely. <laughs> Yeah, there's definite signs of rat activity here. Some very large droppings right next to the hatch. Clearly, Chris and Leslie weren't exaggerating when they said it was like having rats running races over their heads. Mm, it's more urine that I can smell. Oh, joy. Yeah, it's not nice. No. Exposure to rat urine is a major health hazard that can cause leptospirosis, a dangerous disease that can be deadly. The rat droppings are scattered through the roof and it looks like they've had a fair go at the bait stations as well. Earlier, the landlord had a friend put poison baits in the roof, but they didn't kill all the rats. The remaining rats have destroyed the bait stations and it gets worse. On Thursday morning, my partner Leslie woke up to find the carpet covered in maggots from mm -hmm. rotting rodents in the roof. They drop out of the top left corner there where there's some pretty big gaps. We vacuum them up, that's about 24 and a bit hours worth of maggots coming out of the ceiling. Maggots are fly larvae and need rotting flesh to feed on. They'll be growing in the carcasses of the rats that were poisoned. They were, it was just falling in my hair, it was all over the blue table, all in the... I had my grandson's toys there and it had all landed in his toys and... Oh, horrible. Yeah, I didn't know where to go, to be honest. It's like, well, what do you do when your floor is just covered in maggots? Run. You know? Yeah, yeah. run. It's not nice, it's horrible, it really is. It's heartbreaking. Maggots dropping down from the ceiling, I don't think anyone would consider that's healthy. In Dunedin, Wayne has uncovered serious health risks, but an agitated owner isn't helping this inspection. You don't understand Chinese, them tell me you understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no first but I bring her, the clothes, please okay. stop. When's this from? In me. When's that from? Still so how long have you had that pork You know, you talk to Chinese coming, sent okay. to English. Don't okay. worry, don't worry. If it just, if you, if what you could do, you start just organise, tidying that a little bit, cleaning it, we'll carry on into the kitchen, OK? All right. All right. Yeah, you know, I understand Chinese stems are no top of them, and then the first one is them okay. All right, don't worry, don't worry. Inside, and things are about to get a whole lot worse for this troubled operator. What I can actually see under there is rat droppings. See the very large ones? There are rat droppings. But there's evidence that there is some vermin activity. Uh, there's the odd other droppings under there as well. <sighs> These are droppings. You don't clean under there. Yeah, do you know what those are? It's, it's rat droppings, yeah? Capable of transmitting over 500 diseases, including listeria, dysentery and even salmonella, rats are a serious health hazard to unsuspecting diners. Good test of finding whether they've got the wash hand facilities and there's hot water and there's uh, <laughs> detergent and 
disposable paper towel, so pass that part of the test, which is good. <laughs> But because of the severe vermin infestation, Wayne needs to take immediate action under the Dunedin city bylaws. Currently you're carrying a grade C. I'm going to change that on the evidence of what I've found today to a grade D and close your premises, no operation of your business, no sale of food to the public until we've got this issue sorted out. The operator is shut down and must convince Wayne within three days that he can maintain adequate food practices. If not, he faces longer term closure and prosecution under the Food Act. I'm pleased that we've actually done something to protect the public with the food as well. Um, I'm quite happy that it will be closed now until Friday to give the operator sufficient time to make those improvements. In Canterbury, environmental protection officers Melanie Bressington and Chloe Armour are responding to a call out on the pollution hotline. Welcome to Environment Canterbury, speaking of Laura. Smoke pollution is a serious threat to air quality here. OK, bye. It's the job of this team to help prevent it. Today, Melanie and Chloe have been dispatched to investigate a complaint from a young mother. A residential chimney has been repeatedly blowing ghastly smoke onto her property, with concerning effects to her children's health. Oh, that's really strong. Hi. Hi, my name's Melanie. I'm with the Pollution Hotline. Hi. How long has it been occurring today? Probably most of the day. Okay. It can be a lot worse than this. Potential harmful discharge of smoke carries a beefy $300 fine under the Resource Management Act. So a survey first will grade the risk. It's 10 minutes worth of measurements and we take short, sharp kind of sniffs every 10 seconds within that minute and we're measuring the scale of intensity um, on a, a scale of 1 to 6, so 0 being no odour detected at all, 6 being uh, extremely strong odour hedonic tone, so whether it's, you know, extremely unpleasant or if it's quite a pleasant smell. So smoke would probably be in the unpleasant range. Returning from school, the young mother is concerned about the health of both her children, but especially her asthmatic baby. Yeah, smelly. Air pollution studies show that particulate matter and smoke has detrimental effects for asthmatics with decreased lung function. We've just finished the odour assessment. What we'll do now is we'll go over and try and um, contact them and see if they're home. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not a very nice smell, is it? With the risk apparent, Melanie and Chloe must confront the source of the smoke, the neighbour. Hi, my name's Melanie, I'm with the Pollution Hotline. Do you have a moment? You know, interested talking to you? Okay, well we have a right... Sir, we're warranted officers under the Resource Management Act. We'll knock on his door, shall we? Just be careful, Chloe. My property. Oh, but, my the, property. but under the Resource Management Act, we have a right to be on your property. We just wanted to ask you a few questions about your domestic chimney. In Canterbury, Environmental Protection Officers Melanie and Chloe are investigating a smoky chimney. It's causing distress to a young family on a neighbouring property. My property. Oh, my property. Get off. Under the Resource Management Act. Off my okay. OK, sir, we're leaving. Come back here when you've got a warrant. We have got warrants. But under the Resource Management Act, we have a right to be on your property. We just wanted to ask you a few questions about your domestic chimney. Despite the man behaving aggressively, Melanie and Chloe persist. Can I um, take down your name, please? No. Um, we just want a few details for our oh, database. I'm not going to give you none of my details, OK? Unless you've got a warrant to arrest me, I ain't going to give you none of my details, OK? Well, we, have we a don't have a warrant here. Well, you have a warrant to, to arrest, arrest you. you. You have a warrant to arrest it me? It is a no, legal offence. I am not going to tell it you It is a name. criminal offence if you do not provide us with your information. Show me, show me that detail then. OK. Yes. Section 22 of the RMA there. 
failure to provide information. You can just tell us your name and address. Okay, that's sufficient. And what's your telephone number here, please? Ben Rowan. Do you have a mobile number? No. Okay, does any of your flatmates? Don't know. Do you know their names? No. no. Okay. No, so you reside at no. this address, sir? No. No? But you, do you own this property? No. Whereabouts do you live? On the moon. With the man being very unhelpful, Melanie tries a new approach. So it doesn't usually burn like that all the time, or is it just... No. Just when it starts up? Yeah, we've got a guy from Canterbury Chimneys or someone. He came and swept it, and then he told me that uh, the flue wasn't the, lot, the legal length for the pitch of the house or something. So he's oh, coming okay. back and put a four-metre flue on it and a different hat on it okay. one day this week when it yep. ain't raining. Yep. Right, and if that don't fix the problem, come back and see us then. OK. Right? No, that's fine. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, not very pleased to see us, unfortunately. Yeah, he got quite aggressive. Um, he was refusing to give us his information, and it's actually a criminal offence. Um, failure to provide information, so we had to, had to show him what section of the RMA he was going to be breaching if he didn't give us his name and details. And even then, he still was making a joke of it. But there's also a good result out of that. Uh, he is, in fact, increasing the height of his flue there, so that'll lift up the height at which the smoke leaves, so it might just be enough to stop it falling directly into um, the complainant's property, mm. as, it, as we saw it doing today. The man did later follow through on his promise to extend the flu, but further complaints resulted in abatement that required him to stop smoke discharging from the property in an objectionable manner, and Environment Canterbury made attempts to educate him about the correct use of the fire. Back on Auckland's North Shore, Brett is responding to a complaint from tenants living in a rat and maggot infested house. They were just falling in my hair. It was all over the blue table. Didn't know where to go, to be honest. It's like, well, what do you do when your floor is just covered in maggots? Having tried for 18 months to remedy the situation, Leslie is at breaking point. It's not nice. It's horrible. It really is. It's heartbreaking. And the list of health hazards keeps growing. Right, so water quality, drinking water. This is just straight cold water from the tap. It's our drinking water, cooking water, washing water, you name it, after the filters. The water supply to the house comes from this rainwater tank. No. We don't drink the tank water now. It's either get bottled water or we go down to someone with city supply and just fill up cans of water. Actually, we've felt quite a lot better since doing that yeah. religiously. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So this is filtered water. The colour you're seeing there is pretty much the best we've ever had it. It's been green to about that sort of colour on and off in the past. Yeah. So what does Inspector Brett think of this property? This is probably one of the worst I've ever seen. It's all adding up to be quite a serious situation. I am quite surprised that no one's been seriously sick here. At the end of the day, we have both been sick. We can't sleep at night, and it's taken forever and a month of Sundays to get anything done about anything. So we've had a guts full, pretty much. With rats running riot, maggots falling from the ceiling, and green drinking water, these living conditions are not healthy. I'd just really like to get an exit from our tenancy, if we can, either through the tribunal or directly with the property manager and landlord. Um, neither of us are happy living here. I guess you can see why. Chris and Leslie later notify Brett that after a year and a half of battling, they have finally managed to escape their lease. Well, eight minutes after you left, the property manager arrived in a storm of gravel and fury, and uh, we got out of our lease five minutes after her arrival, and. The Saturday after you guys last saw us, we were out. We have clear water now. You can actually <laughs> run the bath and it doesn't look like green tea. Brett did a great job and 
Mm. We only wish we really had a bit the bullet and done it sooner. And it's made us a it's lot happier. Ha- a lot happier, a lot, a lot healthier. Lot happier and healthier. Yeah, healthier. Yeah. Back in Dunedin, Wayne is revisiting Chinese restaurant Blue Sky, where uncovered food and evidence of vermin activity posed a concerning public health risk. Hey, hey. Clean. That's looking a lot different, which is great. We've got containers with lids on things, foods in boxes, big fish. But it's not open, the food's not open, which is good. So what this is kind of showing me is that this business operator can do it, you know. And um, I'm looking for him to consistently keep the premises like this, not just when we've come round and had a, a bit of a talking to him, you know. Can you get for me the pest control work that you've done as well? I'm looking for biting, I'm looking for follow-up, and I'm looking for no bite takes. And in the restaurant area, it's saying that they have inspected boat stations and found no activity in that area. The news is an improvement for the operator. My real ideal hope is that he's going to move this forward now, because obviously what you can see today, Friday, three days on from the inspection, is a completely different looking premises. For now, a degrade will at least allow the operator to reopen his business. So we've made some gradual improvement. I mean, my hope and ambition is that when we come back next week on Thursday, we can move this to a grade C. And who knows, after the food control plan training course in June on the 22nd, you know, next visit, you might be able to move forward again, but only time will tell, really. Blue Sky later earned an upgrade to a more acceptable C grade. 